10.07. John Cass and Jake Hartford in for Bruce and Dan, and they're in for Don and Roman. I want to remind you that so much happens while you're at work each day. Rowan Roper, wrap it all up with some big-name guests, news, traffic, and some laughs. Afternoons 2 to 6 on Chicago's Talk Leader 89 WLS. I'm looking at some of the headlines here, economic headlines. Uh, flames of anger spread from Madrid to Athens. Greek protests turned violent. Spain is rocked. Uh, unemployment in France tops 3 million for the first time since 1999. That's what happens when people are out of work. It says honeymoon over as markets brace for volatile times. In the United States, uh, it says the third quarter GDP has been revised down to 1.25% from 1.7%. Durable goods dropped from uh, uh, 13.9%, worst uh, since recession. And the lie that uh, many of my colleagues keep pushing is that unemployment unemployment's around 8.1% when the real number is 15% unemployment at least. And people that had regular full-time jobs are taking a series of part-time jobs. Guys with uh, good jobs are now stamping cans uh, overnight or yeah. working in bowling alleys and cleaning up, doing anything they can because... Uh, somebody in the White House doesn't want um, the economy to kick in, or he, or he thinks that government can do it. Well, the, if you just heard Huckabee, and, and this story was around yesterday, 55% of people who have businesses said if they were to start a business now, they wouldn't do it. Why would you? The government's in your pocket from the beginning, and then you didn't build that. Right, Jake? You didn't build it. You know, you can, you can start a business, you can have the road in front of your store or whatever you have, but you still need to get the people in the door and spending the money. Right, and you've got to risk your own. And you risk your own, and a lot of people say it's not worth it anymore. But, so what, we're going to all work for the post office? I'm sorry, I don't see that. I, I see Greece, okay, that's what I see. Pl I see Greece and Spain and Portugal, that's where we're going, people. Plus, as we move to the Affordable Care Act, you saw the uh, story yesterday about health premiums are on the rise again. Mm -hmm. So when it gets too expensive, what are they going to do with us, turn us into crackers? Oh, Soylent Green? I saw that movie. I think they should put it back out. <laughs> That's Obamacare for you. Jake well, and John is crackers. I want to be like uh, chocolate pepper. Well, if you can't afford it, and, and, and part of the problem why rates are increasing is that uh, people in this economy have, been, have put off going to the doctor or getting treatment because they have deductibles, and they don't have the money for the deductibles. Mm -hmm. So... The insurance hasn't been paying out a lot on a lot of claims because of that, but also because of the Affordable Care Act. There's a new way in there about uh, record keeping, electronics, and all that stuff, which is making hospitals, doctors more efficient as far as the record keeping. But now a lot of stuff's getting billed that used to fall through the cracks, so prices are going up. Wow! So in other words, every government was going to help us, but we get it in the wallet. Wow, who was surprised? Are you were you surprised? Well, I was That's how it works. I was looking under the Affordable Care Act. They they have three or four different levels of coverage. And the cheapest one is like twelve and a half thousand dollars. And if Bare you bones. if you don't pay it, what happens? You pay a penalty. You, <laughs> you won't have insurance and you you'll be paid. You I, I don't have money for insurance, but I guess I'll pay the, the fine. <laughs> Great. Smart move. Now in North Dakota, now there's a state. It's happy land there. Because of fracking Oil and gas, their unemployment uh, is at 3%, although one month this year it dipped to 2.9%. But it's been at a steady 3% unemployment. Imagine that, 3%. You know, you'd have to find people. I mean, you have to work hard not to get a job when there's 3%. You have to be like a committed bum to not get a job They are it's 2%. They are looking for people. I mean, the McDonald's we, we mentioned earlier, uh, there's, there's McDonald's there that uh, if they hire you, they're going to give you a $300 bonus just, just to get hired. I'll have the number two meal. They have $1.6 billion surplus in their treasury right now. Imagine that. Surplus. $1.6 billion. And I hear that the uh, strippers are doing a land office business, too. Yes, they are. <laughs> right? So there's a premium on pole making. The pole kind I mean, if, like, if you're a welder and, and any kind of, you know... Uh, uh, profession like that they're looking for you they right. say people working on the oil rigs are making a hundred thousand dollars you get a you get a truck you put a camper on it you, and you and you drive out there and you work you can make a hundred two hundred thousand dollars 
uh, they have some cash to live on. We're going to be talking to uh, one of the senators from North Dakota uh, to ask him when this whole gravy train is going to stop. But when you do, when you work and make that all that big chunk of cash, you're doing that because you think you're going to start your own business, right? Your own molding business. Then what happens? Uh, Jim in South Elgin. Good morning, Jim. Welcome to 89 WLS. Good morning, gents. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I have a phrase I like to kind of make an analogy between uh, the uh, disease called diabetes, and I call it economic diabetes. When you, as people know, you know, when an appendage doesn't get, you know, blood like, you know, a lot of people have to have the diabetics have to have their feet amputated because everything dries up. Well, the same thing is going to occur, you know, when you suck the the money out of the private sector, you're creating economic diabetes for that portion of the population is not getting the money that they should. And it's a, it's a real problem, you know, and really it's, it's, it's an educational problem that people just aren't getting. And all these, all these lemmings are just in the bed for Obama. It's like they don't care to look at the fact that in the, in the inner cities, what's the unemployment rate for, for black kids? There's no entry-level jobs, you know. It's just, it's tough, and this is the result of all the stuff. I think, I think the unemployment uh, for youth was around 40%, something like that. It was very high. If they yeah. vote for Obama, they're basically morons okay that's how it works i mean i don't know how you can vote for this guy if you think you're going to if you want the country to get back on track work people get a job it just it's not that he's an evil man he's just totally wrong uh, i'm just supposed to be eye candy here for you i yeah president eye candy not nah, you know what that is it's a mutza i never i didn't want it mutza the president but i'm sorry you got well you call yourself eye candy when people are out of work not to you, my friend. I don't know what policies are working right now. The policy of um, what playing the race card, the policy of playing the class war card, the policy of uh, make you know Ob- Ob- Romney's helping because he's such a stiff. He's like the the guy in the catalog. I mean, that's it. I don't know. Anyway, we're, when we come back, we're going to talk to Senator John uh, Hoven uh, from, right now, the, one of the senators from uh, North Dakota. We'll talk to him, but right, it's 10.15, time for a check of WS traffic, 89 WS traffic.